Are you ready for question four? What can I do? Your potential. Your potential. Champions are champions because they live eternally aware of the investments of the spirit within their persons. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in politics. All those who lead their field are people who are full of confidence in God if they are believers and in the giftings that he's put in them. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. Write that scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Worship team, what has God given you? Excellent voices. Write it down. What has God given you? The grace to receive songs supernaturally. Write it down. Listen, there is nobody here under the sound of my voice who is void of a gifting, an ability, a potential. Potential means what can be if it is developed, if it is deployed. Are we together now? A gentleman once met me and said he wants to be able to preach. I said there are two things that are needed for good preaching. Aside from your understanding, in terms of communication, you need oratory and you need utterance. In order of priority, utterance is more superior to oratory. Oratory helps to make utterance effective. Utterance is an engracing from God that helps you articulate your thoughts in such a way and a manner that everybody educated or, or otherwise can understand. But oratory helps you to construct your ideas such that people can follow your thinking and learn from it. You need both. But in order of priority, utterance supersedes oratory. Are we learning? What do you have? I have been inspired by many people today and it is because of the vast resources that God put within them. I want you to beware of the danger of despising what God has given you. The woman in 2 Kings, I believe, chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 4, the Bible says she was the wife of one of the sons of the prophet. And the Bible says she came and said, my husband is dead. And you know that he did fear the Lord. You would think that because he feared the Lord, he should not be in debt. Hallelujah. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be slaves. Verse 2. Watch what Elisha says. Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Then he says, tell me, what hast thou in the house? This is a question God is asking someone. What do you have in your house? For some of you, you have a, a unique grace to sing. All you need to add is the understanding, character, and anointing on that gift. But the gift is already there. There are some of you who are master communicators even without training. It's a grace God gave you. Imagine what happens when you refine it, when you deploy it. There are, you don't know that charisma is a gift. The ability to compel the attention of people, to have a courage that makes you desirable, is a gift. What have you ignored that God gave you while admiring others? It's good to admire what God has given others, but not to the detriment or at the detriment of what God has given you. Some of you here, you have never gone to a catering school, but what your fingers can do, even the angels, I mean, even not just men, they testify that these fingers, God has placed grace on them. Let me tell you this. One of the primary ways that God blesses men is through the works of their hands. I hope you know that. One of the primary ways that God blesses men is by blessing the works of their hands. The fruits of your mind, products of your creativity. I have met exceptional people. I remember one time I went to preach somewhere and some gentleman, did you know, I entered into the office, the rotunda, and while we we're having a discussion, unknown to me, that gentleman was drawing me. True story. He was drawing me in an inverted way. I didn't even know it was me. Later on, they just called my attention. Then I turn around, and here is a beautiful photo of me. I mean, you would think it's another me. And 
one of the graces God has given Africa and even this country is the gift. We are creative people, but we have not been trained to appreciate our own and what we have. Hallelujah. There are people who have constructed things here. Did you know I got to find out that there are people who have gotten international awards in this nation beyond 10, 11, 15, and yet nobody knows them. There are tech giants here. One time I was in Kenya, and then a group of gentlemen came, and there are some tech savvy guys, a few of them, and they were just talking to me, and I was looking at them. I mean, just, if you see how these guys were brilliant, they knew what they were doing. All these guys who hack and steal money from banks and the rest, that is a grace God gave them that they perverted. The same energy it takes to steal is the same energy it takes to build. Are we together? Do you know what it means to stand on the road and time a car that is coming? It's the same principle of success. Why didn't they just convert it to build something that works? Every one of you under the sound of my voice, there is something God has placed in your hand. And that thing God has placed in your hand among the many channels is where your prosperity lies. Is where your increase lies. Is that true? There are people today who have become millionaires. Now, the purpose of identifying your giftings is not just for money. But I use that just to motivate you. They discovered something about themselves. Let me challenge you. I want you to take the time as an assignment. Identify three among the many giftings God has put in your life. Write them, be conscious of them. And then develop, refine them. If it means going to get an extra certification to give you credence to serve that gift, go for it. If it means having some informal training to build yourself, don't celebrate the, the existence of potentials. Identify them but develop them until they are deployable. Nobody will pay you for identifying your potential in a raw state. It must be developed and then deployed to serve. Hallelujah. Some of you here have what it takes to start hairdressing outfits. You have it. It's a grace God gave you. You can be sleeping and still plat, and you will not make mistakes. Grace that God gave you, but you are there ignoring the gifting of God. Some of you can make clothes. Some of you can cook. Some of you, you just have the grace for leadership. You can train people. You can set up an educational outfit. It's a grace God gave you. 20 children, no more. And you put the fees there. Whoever has a trouble with their child understanding, they should come. By the time all those children produce A1 in their exams, you will not need to shout again. Now you can call the shots by yourself. Repent from laziness in the name of Jesus Christ. Many people just believe that they will emerge magically without identifying what God has given them. There are people today who sing. They raise their voices and my goodness, it's like you are hearing angels sing. Everything that needs to be done, there's a man empowered by God to be able to do it. Someone produced this, this Bible. Someone produced this phone. Someone produced this mic. What will the earth know you for? I want you to go back and make up your mind. Don't be marketing something you have not refined. Are we together? The moment you market a gifting that is not refined, you will be at the mercy of those you are trying to sell it to. But when you refine yourself, you can now define the terms because you are so gifted. Be so gifted that no amount of money becomes worth it to pay you. Did you hear what I said? Be so gifted. Refine your giftings. As a man of God, stay with the word, build capacity such that no amount of money in gratitude anybody gives you looks like this is, no. You can celebrate God and say, thank God, but they know. That's what it means to be priceless. There are consultants today that people leave Nigeria or leave any other nation to go and meet them. There may be four or five in the whole world who do the things that they do. 
They were not born that way. They were children who identified an area of grace and pressed towards it. I am a, I am a fanatic of competence. I detest incompetence. Make up your mind that average, selling average will only leave you a mediocre. Challenge yourself by the spirit. You're a man of God. You make up your mind that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I will not stand on anybody's pulpit and preach. And while I'm preaching, they are passing papers and say, please tell him to round up. Our people are angry because he's just preaching nonsense. And once you are done, they just say, okay, please, your car is at this other side, go. And they meet as a committee and say, never bring this person again. You see how all our destiny helpers are frowning now because this guy did not bring anything. Make up your mind that when this, the light in the stage is on for you, the moment you stand there, you don't stand on to shame. Do your homework. Labor in the spirit, in prayer. Acquire relevant knowledge. Acquire relevant trainings. Humble yourself and learn. If a child has what will promote and lift you and promote your mind and your understanding, humble yourself and let that child teach you. Hallelujah. I challenge our leaders here every time that we must continue to rise and to thrive. It is the same challenge for me as a man of God. I don't want to be at the same level. I don't want you to see me and it looks like I plateaued at a level. No, it should be ever increasing glory. The Bible calls it the glory that excels. That when people see you at a level, at, by the next time they see you, you have, you have risen to an altitude in the spirit that is clear, evident before men. I'm praying for you. The kind of hunger that will not leave you a mediocre. The kind of hunger that will drive you to buy books. The kind of hunger that will drive you to watch videos. The kind of hunger that will drive you to get trainings. In the name of Jesus, may that hunger rest upon you. Can I tell you the truth? The cure for shame, among many other factors, is competence. The cure for shame the cure for shame apostle people seem to ignore me nobody seems to pay attention to me let me tell you the truth competence is your bailout i vowed before god and that not from a competitive standpoint that there is nowhere i will stand on earth that i'll be ashamed no i will admire people i'll be inspired i'll be challenged but never to a point that i will return and put my hand on my head as though I were not, no, no, no. Everybody was given one brain on earth, two eyes, two hands. If I am mismanaging my own, I should challenge myself to reinvent myself. God is speaking to someone. There are businesses that have been lying here and God is saying, you better start doing something about it. There are creative ideas. Do you know, some of you, you can be consultants. What you know, with all humility, there are few people who know it the way you know it. What is stopping you from evolving? You can advise people. If I were not a preacher, I would still not be a failure. If all I do is to travel around the world teaching people how to live effectively, I will still be fulfilled doing it. Fixing people's minds and helping them to think well. Listen, the, this destiny race bar, if a door is closed, force it to open. Don't sit down there and say, who open it for me? Force it to open. How forcible are right words. Hallelujah. You get to a place and it looks like there's nothing there. Father, you have placed something in my hand. What can I do? You gave me the ability to make hair. Uh, it's just making hair. Just making hair? Don't royalties make hair? Don't people make clothes? Why are you not the one doing their own? I have told you, you are only competent when kings invite you. And it's kings that really have the reward system you are looking for. Other people may just encourage you. The real reward comes when kings call you. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. Remember? He interpreted the dream of the baker. They didn't have the power to reward him. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He didn't have the power to reward him. But when the king dreamt, and Joseph interpreted the king's dream. That was the end of hardship. It matters whose dream you are interpreting. 
God uses the baker and the wine presser to train you. Maybe you're a man of God here. Some of the small, small meetings God is giving you, don't worry, be faithful. He's training you. When he's done with you, one day he will sample your destiny helpers before you and give you an, a, an opportunity to articulate his grace upon your life. And that becomes a day there is no going back again. Do you believe what you are hearing? Koinonia, you are being trained to be a people of grace, a people of kingdom influence. This ministry does not raise mediocres by the grace of God. Did you hear what I said? Regardless where you are coming from, you come as you are, but you do not stay as you are. Kings are looking for you. They are calling you. And you see, when you become competent, nobody will ask you where you are coming from. All those questions are ways of managing you out of the scene. When a patient is about to die and a consultant comes, nobody will ask whether he's a male consultant, female consultant, young consultant. If that consultant is 29 years old, everybody will come and they'll say, Sir, my wife or my husband is about to die. Can you do something? Don't say people look at me like I'm a small boy. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a flimsy excuse. Your competence can add to your age and keep you in the midst of elders and they will call you an elder accredited by competence. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. That's your prophecy. I'm on my way to better days. It won't be like yesterday again. You're on your way to better days. Your status is changing. There's no more decline. You're on your way to better days. Status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Apostle, I didn't have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. All I have is just the ability to sow. When the hand of God rests upon that, and you will now begin to sow for kings, they will call you and say, where did you learn this from? And you will tell them it's by the hand of God. I'm praying for someone. You may be gifted, but the anointing that needs to come on your gift to now start bringing you rewards, I'm praying from this night let that anointing rest on your gift shout a believers amen. amen let the anointing rest upon your gift let the anointing rest upon your gift what do you do when you find your gifting identify it refine it and serve identify it refine it and serve one last time identify it refine it or develop it and serve you serve with it you serve with it you serve with it hallelujah every time you serve with the gift in god has given you there is someone at the end who is looking at you who needs you and will be willing to call you can I tell you this? One of the prayers I want to pray for you before we touch the last one is if you are with the wrong audience, sometimes you can be gifted, but you are in the midst of people who don't need what you carry. If you are in the midst of people who don't need what you carry, you will look weak. It, it will look like they are taking advantage of you. But when God wants to help you, he relocates you and brings you in the presence of people who have a desperate need for what you carry. That's when you will see how valuable you are. Can I pray for someone? By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, this night, I relocate you to the place where those who need you are. Listen, I remember, I may not mention names, but I remember the very first meeting I attended where I can say they honored me sincerely and they honored me properly many years ago. Until then, of course, all those who did, they did their bid. I went for meetings as an anointed man. And sometimes, those days, it was usually the youths in the church 
who really wanted me to come and then they would pressure their pastors so the people didn't have an appreciation for who was coming it was just to honor the youth so that for some so that they don't leave since they've said they want this man and sometimes you come and with all due respect not to look down those days I'm sure the people were sincere sometimes they look with disdain sometimes they look with sarcasm who is this guy where is he from oh yeah let's hear what he's saying John 3 uh-huh we're listening then later on oh this is serious they are tapping them okay looks like there's something here never forget a very touching story when I went to the house of someone to pray I was invited and I remember the man sat down with such sarcasm and he was looking at me as if these are all these guys who are just these hungry people and then when I began to speak I noticed at a point the man stopped eating true story and he was looking and then he started nodding in agreement later on that's it yes that's it at the end of it he escorted me out I pray for you again my dear people in the name of Jesus may God position you where you are needed <laughs> hallelujah there are many business people here where you are you are being underutilized the people do not even know the value you carry they push you like a piece of rag whereas there's somebody praying for half your potential and they will pay the person 10 times what they are paying you listen it is when demand and supply meet that there are rewards are we together now there are those who need you they have been praying for you but you have not been able to meet them that's my own job now yours is to train your skill my own is to relocate you by prophecy and in the name of Jesus I say it again may my God send you as a gift send you as a gift send you as a gift in the name of Jesus I submit to you with every sense of humility it is a beautiful feeling to be in the midst of those who have an appreciation for your value they will honor you they will do everything within their power I have gone to places today where I was almost afraid at the treatment the show of honor I was almost with my my conservative self please let Jesus be the one who is seen they said that's your concern there Jesus is already seen our own is to do this and you are wondering how do you do such a thing for a human being again I'm saying it all someone where you are walking you are long overdue there long overdue you have stayed there the truth is with all humility they don't have the capacity to reward your value again therefore rise to the next level rise to the next level if you have the faith to receive there are some of you your current level of development you should be working with multinationals you should be working with NGOs at an international scale if you have the faith I push you there by the spirit something happened very recently that humbled me and um, I'll save all the details but God did something that I said Kai God I fear you all I fear you I fear you once upon a time there were people who I would pray from the sincerity of my heart to meet it was my in my sincere desire it would be such an honor to meet some of these people with all due respect and with every sense of humility and glory to God some of these people today they try to reach me and say apostle do you know that I have tried for two years to get your number the person who asked me to get I had to be begging the person as if and he finally gave me your number and I'm watching and I said my God look at this it's a dangerous thing to be where people cannot honor you I'm saying this again there are pastors I want to pray for you not not with any there are certain people who God must bring to your congregation that are called sons of consolation these are people who God positions don't think what I'm saying is not important every man of God needs such people in their lives men and women sent by God with a revelation to hold your hands I'm not just saying it in terms of finances these are the kind of people if you cough they will buy you a pharmacy their assignment is to see that you remain you are their ministry by God 
ministry will be frustrating for you if you don't have such people. God has stationed some of these people in my life to the glory of God. I have seen many others have these people. They make the burden of ministry easy. They help you maintain integrity as you serve. And you don't need to be a man of God to have these people. By the privilege of God's grace, there are families here. The children you gave birth to are not the only children God ordained to bless you. There are other children that did not come from your womb. But simply because you have not been located, a young man can look at you and say, Mama, because of something your daughter did for the rest of your life, I will put you on salary till the day you see his face. You don't believe that happens? When Joseph was with his brothers, what did they do? They kicked him, threw him inside a well. Potiphar's wife added her own. But the day Pharaoh saw him, the first day became the only day he remained in that captivity. When God wants to help a man, even financially, he blesses the works of your hands, then he connects you to people who have entered their Rehoboth. If you are Lot, he will connect you to, I, to um, Abraham. If you are Ruth, he will connect you to Boaz. If you are Esther, he will connect you to Ahasuerus. The pattern is always the same. When God wants to accelerate your becoming, he does not just bless the works of your hands. He positions strategic people. Is it alright if I speak one more time? In the name of Jesus Christ, you are located in a place where your value is not appreciated. Whether you are a man of God, whether you are a businessman, if it's a period of your training, may grace be given for you to remain there. But if it is that your time is up, and is that your grace is being despised. I relocate you to the place of honor. You will hear marvelous testimonies from this. Marvelous testimonies. Do you know, sometimes, this my dear people, sometimes they go to minister somewhere. They will bless them and give them honorarium and then they will package something and say, when you get back, give apostle to Adam. Did I sing? Did I preach? Did I minister? I don't even know the church where they went to. Hi. May God extend people from you. Huh? Extend people from you that will keep bringing back blessings to your life. There are some of you, someone will look at you and say, so you are the mother of this lady because of that. I'm moving you to a house of your own. Some of you, someone will look at you and say, so you are the one they've been talking about. I move you to, if you believe it, receive it in Jesus' name.